Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Smut by Alan Bennett. So this has got two novellas in it. Uh, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check on my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Both unseemly stories in Smut concern women in middle life. Mrs. Donaldson, whom sex takes by surprise, and Mrs. Forbes, who is not surprised at all. The stories are naughty, honest, and very funny. And they are very funny, and they're not too smutty. I said in my written review, you, you would be able to give this to your grandma, you know? And I thought this was sad, this kind of talks about the death of social life, which we don't often think about when people die. Mrs. Donaldson had been coming to the medical school for a month or so now, and to the hospital itself for much longer. It was here that Mr. Donaldson had slowly and not unpainfully died, visited daily by his uncomplaining wife in a routine she had begun by finding irksome, but to which she had grown inured and even attached so that his eventual death came as a double deprivation. She missed the visiting as much as the visited, and in the afternoons particularly was now somewhat at a loss. And so she ends up becoming like a model for, um, like a lecturer in healthcare. They use her to, like, simulate patients. And she says, I don't even see it as acting, just a case of keeping a straight face. So, we, and here's one of the great lines. Her pulse is good. Yes, said Dr. Ballantyne. Only you're taking it in a glove that has just been up Mr. Porter's bottom. We get this little com like conversation here. I never even liked swearing, she confessed to Delia. So when people swear, I feel out of it. Don't worry, said Delia. Two months at this place and you'll be saying shit with the best of them. She actually meant fuck, but didn't think Mrs. Donaldson was quite ready for this yet. And so she ends up like watching her tenants having sex with their permission. It's how they pay their rent. Um, but we learn about her own sex life. The Donaldson sex had been largely mute and certainly posing no danger to property. A grunt from Cyril signifying that he at any rate had reached a satisfactory conclusion. And I uh, get, uh, get a bit more on that. Their Congress had concluded the Donaldsons retired to their separate sides of the bed and went to sleep. There was never any discussion or comment even. It was over until next time. Not so these young people who, if an orgasm is a little death, proceeded to conduct a post-mortem in an assessment of their respective quotients of gratification and pleasure. And I thought this was quite modern and woke, you know. What you have to remember is that these days gender is in flux. The patient may be a transvestite, a transsexual or a transient on a park bench. It is no matter. How they are dressed, how they look is of no clinical concern. The patient may smell. His or her body may stink. That is not your concern either. If you want bodies that don't stink, go in for surgery where they wash the patient first. And let's talk about whether to keep someone on life support. And um, someone says, let's look on the bright side. If we switched her off, it would reduce her carbon footprint. I thought this was a really interesting point. It is also interesting that though a daughter can say, I have to do everything for her about her aged mother, at the other end of life, a mother would never say of her infant child, I have to do everything for her. Why do we take the helpless condition of infancy without complaint, but not that of senility? And then he goes, Cully, any thoughts? Cully considered. The shit smells worse for a start. And then here a little bit on naming, which I thought was cool. As names, one might think Betty and Graham nicely matched, both dull and unassertive and not committing their bearers to any particular stance on human affairs in the way that Tessa does, or Rory even. But this was partly the trouble, for though she could never admit it, Graham's mother blamed herself for calling him Graham in the first place. In the years since he was born, her sights had risen and Graham was not nearly the classy name she'd once thought. She wished now that she could get rid of it as she'd got rid of the dark oak dining suite that belonged to the same period. But though car boot sales exist to dispose of discarded aspirations, there are no stalls dealing in our most unwanted commodities like names, relatives, or one's own appearance in the glass. And then there's a reference to Graham Greene as well, who's one of my favourite authors, even though I know that Bennett himself isn't much of a fan. So I like this little exchange. Surely, the young man said, I'd fuck her on Fridays. Is that nice? asked Graham. She sure thinks so. Why Fridays? asked Graham. Her hubby plays squash. Uh, this story's got a lot of LGBTQIA plus themes as well as like sexual blackmail as well. And get this little ex exchange. You seem very articulate for a lorry driver. I read, don't I, in laybys. When you see lorries parked in laybys, that's what they're doing nine times out of ten. I once saw a guy with a lorry who had a bath in, in his lorry. That was very cool. And then at the end, uh, uh, Kevin, who's the, the blackmailer, he perishes in a high-speed motorway car chase. And Bennett writes, A death that might seem to have more to do with narrative tidiness than any driving without due care and attention. Which did make me chuckle. So yeah, all in all, Smut by Alan Bennett, very good. The first story was the better of the two, but I couldn't fault it either way throughout. So I gave it a five out of five. It's just flawless, really. Um, so I definitely recommend, even if, even if you're new to Alan Bennett, check these out. If you're an established Alan Bennett fan, you need to read this, it's cracking. So there we have it, that's what I made of Smut by Alan Bennett. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.